So if you're watching this, we ran out of time in class, so you have to watch the last demos as a YouTube video. So here we have an Erlenmeyer flask with a balloon hanging from it. Um, it's just open. The balloon is open. But if we're looking at this as a system, we're talking about the air inside the flask. And the air cannot escape because I've created a closure here. So that is a closed system. But because the balloon can move, that makes it a flexible container. Okay, so this is closed system with a flexible container. And what, I'm, what the demo is, is I'm going to try to inflate this balloon with all my might and we'll see, uh, we'll see if we can get a change. I'll, I'll face the little concave side towards the camera see if you can see any, any change. So here I go. Okay, so a little tiny bit of inflation. I'll do it again, a little, maybe a little closer. Okay, so not much happened in there. Okay. Now I'm going to take a flask that is twice as big, take the same balloon here, carefully stretch that over the top so I don't fling my flask across the room. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, so hopefully you can see a little bit more. Okay, so when we're looking at those, why does this one inflate more than this one? And why can't I inflate it very much in the first place, okay? Let's answer the second question first there. I can't inflate it very much because what is trapped in here is air, and that is creating a backward pressure on that balloon. So I can add some pressure to the inside of the balloon right now if I'm just holding it like this. The pressure inside the balloon is the same as the room, which is the same as what's in the flask because that's where I stoppered it. It was at the same pressure as the room. So it's not, not changing. But if I put more pressure inside the balloon, the balloon does inflate. But I, I learned really quickly that my lungs can't create much pressure. And the air in here is going to be compressed a little bit, colliding with that balloon more, and prevent it from inflating very much. Okay, if I wanted to create a balloon here, so if I left this the same, but I wanted to cr create a situation where that balloon pops out and inflates, like the third picture on your worksheet. Okay, there's a couple ways to do it. I need, so right now, again, the pressure inside the balloon here and the pressure inside the bottle are the same. I need to make the pressure inside the bottle more than the pressure inside the balloon here. Okay, and There's two ways to do that. One, increase the pressure inside the bottle. And the easiest way to increase the pressure in a closed container is to heat it up. Okay? You don't want to heat a can of hairspray or spray paint in your car or in a fire because the pressure inside will get so great it'll explode. Okay, So same thing here. If I heat it up, it's going to create a larger pressure on the inside and it'll inflate that balloon outside the flask. Okay? The other way is if I were to take this to an area with low pressure. For example, if I took this to the top of Mount Everest. Right now, currently inside the bottle, I've got a pressure of whatever the room pressure is here in Laramie, but on the top of Mount Everest, it's much lower. And so it'll create a lesser pressure on the outside of the balloon, it'll pull that balloon out of the bottle. It might need more than that, it might need closer to a vacuum, really high in our atmosphere, but if I decrease the pressure on the outside, the balloon will be pulled out. Okay, okay. our final balloon demo here is the balloon bottle, and this is basically a round bottom flask. Uh, there's a hole in the bottom, so hopefully in your picture you can see that that hole. I'm going to apply my balloon here, stuff it in, stretch it across the top. Okay, all right, so this is our before picture. And if we're looking at this, is this an open or a closed system? Well, there's a hole here. And there's a hole here. So everywhere in this, this bottle is open to the room. Air can come and go through both openings. So this is an open system. Okay. How does the pressure inside the balloon compare to the room's pressure in this situation right now? So inside the balloon, it's the same as the room because it's open. If you have an open system, the pressure in the room and the pressure inside your container are the same. Okay. Pressure inside the glass bottle, all of its room pressure at the moment. Okay. All right, so I'm going to blow into this one just like I did in the Erlenmeyer flask, and we're going to see what happens. Okay, so now we 
we have, I've blown it up. The balloon actually expanded this time. I put a stopper in the bottom to keep it expanded. And then if we look at the top, this might be something you've never seen before, okay? The balloon is not tied, but it is still inflated, okay? So, if we're looking at this, go ahead and draw that balloon in your after picture so you can show what happened visually, okay? Why did this happen here, but it didn't happen here? And hopefully, that hole in the bottom is the biggest difference in these bottles. The shape doesn't really matter, but that hole in the bottle, bottom makes it so that the air inside the bottle is able to be pushed out when you inflate the balloon. So that air left, it's not compressed anymore, it just leaves and then the balloon fills up, fills up that space. Okay, I put the stopper in to keep the balloon open and now we have an after situation that we can look at the, the container. It is a closed system here, okay, between the cork and the balloon, there's a little gap and that is closed system. No air is entering or leaving that bottle, okay? There is an open system for the balloon, but the container, the part that's actually contained, is a closed system, okay? Now if we're looking at rigid versus flexible, okay? That balloon is flexible still. I could probably, you know, stick a stirring rod in here and prod it and make the balloon move. So the balloon is flexible, making the whole container flexible. So even though the glass isn't flexible, if one part of the container is flexible, that makes a flexible container. Okay? All right, number 21. How does the pressure inside the balloon compare to the room's pressure in this after situation? So again, if you have an open container, the pressure in here is caused by the air from the room, and that is, makes it the same as the pressure in the room. So the pressure in the room is all that's needed to hold this balloon open. Where is the pressure different in this system and explain how it's different? So inside the glass bottle, between the glass and the balloon, that's where we have a different pressure. It's not room pressure. It's much lower than room pressure. It's almost a vacuum. I probably didn't get every single molecule of air out of there um, to make a total vacuum because I'm a human and I just can't be perfect like that. But there's a little bit of air in here and that tiny, tiny bit of air is creating some pressure. But it's gotta be lower than the room pressure because the room pressure is enough to keep that balloon expanded. So it's pushing that elastic balloon open and the tiny bit of pressure here is just enough to create a little bit of space between the bottom of the bottle and the balloon. Okay, so it's much lower than the room pressure. And then number 23, what will happen if we remove the cork from the bottom of the bottle? Okay, you probably know that, that the air will rush in to equalize the pressure and the balloon is going to deflate, but we'll show you anyway. All right, and now you're back to your balloon bottle. So a bottle made for exactly what I just showed you and that's it. So finish your worksheet, make sure you don't forget it, and uh, we'll see you in class next time.